Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christie. My name is Dr. Christy Reisinger, and today I'd like to address some of the comments I received on my last video. First, I'm not opposed to hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin or hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin and zinc. I just don't think that the data is there to support this yet. I've looked at many, many studies that have been used by supporters of both of these regimens and, I've, and have seen these regimens touted as cures to COVID-19. But these studies that I reviewed are often observational in nature, such as case controls, cohort studies, and retrospective studies. Here are my thoughts. Results of observational studies are, by their nature, open to dispute. They run the risk of containing biases and many of the studies being used to promote hydroxychloroquine, azithromycin, and or zinc are observational. These types of studies are great to develop hypotheses that are then checked with randomized controlled trials. Case control studies, cohort studies, and retrospective studies should not be used as the way to push treatment. They should be used as a way to promote a hypothesis and a way to push to have randomized control trials be done to test this hypothesis. This is science. This is medicine. This is how, above all, we do no harm. You know, there have been a lot of other ideas in medicine that at first we thought were great ideas until we did randomized control trials on them. Here are four. Did y'all know that knee meniscal tears and osteoarthritis in knees for patients 45 and older would often be sent for knee arthroscopy? Because it makes sense. Of course, you'd go in and clean out the knee and that would make it work better, right? But after a randomized control trial was done with surgery versus physical therapy, outcomes were exactly the same for both sets of patients at six months. Let's move on to peanut allergies. This is near to my heart because my daughter has severe peanut allergies. And I remember my pediatrician was very thoughtful about telling me to prevent my baby from having any peanut exposure until she was several years old. However, when a randomized control trial was done, they found there was an 80% reduction in peanut allergies when babies were exposed to peanut protein early, often starting at four months. That was a complete reversal, and I wonder if my baby could have been spared a peanut allergy for the rest of her life. Third, fish oil and ome or omega-3 fatty acids for heart health. We've all heard the benefits. We've all seen the ads promoting omega-3 fatty acids for heart health. However, did y'all know that there was a randomized control trial with 12,000 patients with multiple cardiovascular risk factors and a daily treatment with omega-3 fatty acids did not reduce cardiovascular morbidity and mortality when compared to a plain old placebo. And lastly, ginkgo biloba. That's been often touted to prevent memory loss. There have been studies that have shown why that should work, but when a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial was conducted in five academic medical centers in the United States between the years 2000 and 2008, there was a median follow-up of 6.1 years with 3,000 patients, and ginkgo biloba showed no benefit in the prevention of dementia. In the end, I want hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin and zinc to work. I want there to be an early treatment for my patients who feel miserable with COVID-19 and are looking to me for answers, but we just don't have the data to promote any of these treatments yet. We need randomized control trials to be done. They're underway. It just takes time. Thanks for joining me.